Hello and welcome back to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video, we're looking at a full marks model of language paper one, question four. And in particular, I would love for you to go to the linked description box below where I have a copy of the mark scheme, a copy of the insert and a copy of the full question paper if you want to get stuck into that. The point of this video is to fuel your understanding of how you can gallop to the top of this mark scheme and see a breakdown of each of these key bullet points in the mark scheme to engage with the critical question that you have worth 20 marks. So let's go. We're looking at this particular question four for our model answer. As with all question fours, it's characterized by a critical response that we need to evaluate and decide how much we agree with. We're given specific lines to concentrate on and we're told a, a student said this part of the story set during breakfast time shows that Alex is struggling to cope with his mother's illness. To what extent do you agree? We have to have an opinion in order to evaluate to what extent we agree with this opinion. We need to consider our own impressions of Alex. I love these bullet points because they really can guide your answer, as you'll see with the response that you'll evaluate with me in a moment. And we need to evaluate how the writer shows that Alex is struggling to cope. So this is actually about how you choose evidence to prove your argument and actually how you refer back to the way you've gathered that evidence. I'm going to show you what that looks like now. My suggestion is that you read this model answer because I'm about to get really forensic with it. So please hit pause and actually unpick for yourself how it gets full marks. First thing to say is that as I'm going through these bullet points of the mark scheme, the reason for this is so you can really magpie the phrases you might choose to use in every possible question four that you face. And also so that you get a sense of how these answers are built and how it signals to the examiner why it gets full marks. So the first bullet point says evaluates critically and in detail the effects on the reader. Now, that is subtle phrasing the whole way through. Simple things like the reader understands Alex, Alex's anger. We understand that. We feel sympathy for the position he's in. All of this is signalling the argument that we're driving, which is that we do see the tension at the family table and in particular how Alex is struggling to cope. We're not sitting on the fence or changing our argument. We're consistent from the start. What I think I want to draw your attention to is the third paragraph, the yellow there. From this, the reader understands the important role that the mother plays in the family and the profound impact this is having on Alex. This constant signaling to you as the reader also acknowledges that we are seeing the evidence that you are critiquing which is powerful and a really key game changer because you're no longer treating the character as like a real person, but you're also aware that you are commenting as a critic. This particular strand showing perceptive understanding of writers' methods is incredibly um, brilliant as a strength for most students. You need to be able to comment on the devices that are at play Things like foreshadowing a reference here repeatedly. We've got references that I've pulled out in particular to the way the atmosphere is described in the second paragraph of the response. I think it's interesting that just referencing dialogue, actually saying that and talking about the impact of it as shown through Alex's anger in his dialogue with his family members shows you're perceptive enough to evaluate how the writer has brought this agenda to your attention. I think it's interesting as well that this is not us rapidly listing off every device that's at play, but it is us using cautious language. I want to draw your attention to the third paragraph where it talks about perhaps the writer structures the text in this way to demonstrate how Alex is struggling to cope with the disruption his mother's illness has caused the mundane actions to everyday life. That sort of cautious criticality, that tentative language is really powerful for you as a, a writer of a question for response. It shows that you're thinking of possible interpretations and thinking of how the methods used have a deeper significance. You also see this at play with the use of analysis around metaphor in both paragraph three and paragraph four of the response. 
with all of this everything is rooted to a reason because it suggests that what was once the central driving force of the family has become a shadow each time we're adding to our argument we are not just saying that's a metaphor we're saying why that is important that is a key feature for us tentative language as i say like perhaps and possibly do a really great job here but equally it's the use of language that's showing we are analyzing like suggesting amplifying signaling that shows you are genuinely critically engaging now this might feel like the most straightforward of our bullet points to meet but you'll note that there are not a huge number of textual references used by this particular writer instead they use the juiciest i like to say range of textual details when they say judicious it means you really hand pick the best in each of the pieces of evidence they've selected they then go on to analyze as you just saw in the last bullet point why that evidence is significant to fueling their interpretation and i think it's really great to zero in on the fact that this response does not have many many unfully formed responses based on embedded huge numbers of evidence instead it's short quotations that have a huge punch because of the way they are then analyzed this last bullet point deserves its own drum roll uh, developing a convincing and critical response to the focus of the statement that does not mean you start your response by saying i agree or i disagree with the statement it instead means you state your intentions as we see in the opening paragraph which is really just two sentences that signal what the writer is about to expose in their response more than that you'll note that at the end of every paragraph the linking back to the statement is key to being convincing and to continuing your critical response i know i referenced this earlier but it's so important you stay consistent in your response you don't flit between opinions because when we argue something passionately we stay on the same side I think it's also interesting to note that we have a fair bit of tentative language alex is both angry and perhaps in denial about how serious his mother's illness is one thing that i walk away from a question for thinking about is how we have to simplify our argument in order to create this detailed convincing and critical response i'm really hoping that these bullet points and the way i've broken down this model can help you steal and magpie the phrases that you can then apply uh, to practice that you do best of luck <laughs>